Hey everybody, welcome back to UFC. Today we're going to be talking about a very interesting topic, the flat earth. That's right, you heard me correctly, the flat earth. Now there is a whole society of people that actually believe we live on a flat earth. And they have some pretty substantial observations and some interesting questions to bring in and ask science. So I'm going to explain, I'm going to open the video, I'm actually going to do a debunking the flat earth and why I don't think it stands against the test of science. So let's look at the flat earth model, let's look at what they believe basically, um, and then go over the reasons why I don't believe that. So here we are here, this is the flat earth model. The same measurements of the earth, so there is 12,000 miles from the North Pole to the South Pole. The only difference here on the earth is that this outside ring here is the South Pole. And you can see these spinning. This is the sun and this represents the moon as it goes over the earth. The sun and the moon are 3,000 miles above the earth according to the flat earth model. Now mathematically this is accurate. Either the sun is 93 million miles away or it's small and it's 3,000 miles away. So this is mathematically plausible. Some flat earthers say that there's no satellites and some flat earthers believe that there are satellites. But if there were satellites flying they would be as tall as a, the Hubble telescope would be as tall as a four quarter stacked on top of this. Just, just a, a centimeter and a half maybe above the top of this scale here. So. As this spins around, just lost my moon, as this spins around, the earth in a flashlight, or the sun in a flashlight type pattern, gives a, a light to the earth as it rotates around. Now the summer, as it's summer in the northern hemisphere, the, sun, the sun's rotation is actually smaller, and so the flashlight pattern goes around and it actually gives the northern hemisphere, the north pole, 24 hours of light during the summer here. But, there's not a 24 hour light spirit period in the south, south Pole. They say the North Star actually sits right above the Earth, right above the center of the North Pole, and everything spins around the Earth like a dome. The planets, which they say aren't really planets, they're just the luminous balls, float around in an orbit-like pattern just like the Sun and the Moon and the stars. Right. Now, Let's take a look at moon phases. So moon phases on the flat Earth is what happens is the moon actually travels at a different speed than the sun does and it has a slightly smaller orbit than the sun's orbit. So the sun or the moon goes in a smaller orbit around the around the north pole and as it passes in front of the sun we have the no moon as it goes around. And as it's just off there's just a slight crescent. And as it goes all the way around to the opposite side, now this is in a full moon standing. It's pretty much the same model as the globe Earth, that the moon goes around the Earth and in between the sun and the Earth is a no moon and on the back side of the Earth there's a full moon. That's the phases of the moon. So let's go over why they believe that the Earth is flat. Well, first of all, all the pictures you get from NASA are fake. They're absolutely fake. They're a compilation is what they are and the Flat Earth Society says that they're all fake. They establish that they're fake. When you watch a satellite picture it's very fascinating because most of them is easily determined to be fraudulent very 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 quickly. Uh, and I, I agree with a lot of these analysis. I question um, a lot of the images that we're getting from NASA. This, I believe that this is a legitimate concern. Um, I don't know if I would go so far as to say that NASA is fake, but definitely some of their photos have been altered. Um, now we'll talk a little bit more about this later, but these are the reasons why they believe in them. I'm not going to rebuttal them right now. The North Star. They say the North Star is right above the North Pole and everything goes around in a circle and you see no parallaxing in the stars. If we were really a small little planet, this is our globe, and way over there that ball, that red ball you can see is the moon. If we we're really spinning at a thousand miles an hour and going through the universe oh so fast, the stars would begin to move. You would see parallaxing everywhere. This is evidence, they say, as to why it is impossible for us to be on a globe Earth. And the flat Earth model is the right one. Astronomy. All astronomy is fake. Is another reason why they say that they believe that the Earth is flat. You can see across a flat plane of water 
50 to 60 miles. Now in the globe earth, here I'll put up a globe earth with the estimated drop eight inches squared per mile. So at 50 or 60 miles, there's no way that you should see the shoreline of another city on the other side of a lake. Over and over and over, they have conclusively demonstrated that you can see things 50 and 60 miles away. There is no possible way that we should be able to see them, they say. So this is another evidence that they hold for the flat earth. <clears throat> Light rays coming through the clouds. Light rays, they say, determine that the earth is close to the sun and not far away. If the sun was really 93 million miles away, much farther than that moon, the lights, the light coming to the earth would be parallel. These would be parallel lines coming in and striking the earth from the sun 93 million miles away. So they say because you have this this V triangular shape coming through the sun, splaying out, that demonstrate that the sun is close and not far, far away. Further evidence, they say, that we're not on a spinning ball is centrifugal force. So they say if you're on a spinning ball and you're on the North Pole, the amount of centrifugal force would be less than at the equator. Therefore, everything on the equator should just fly off if a ball is traveling at a thousand miles an hour. This is absolutely evidence that they have that we are not on a ball spinning. There is no evidence, they say, that demonstrates we are on a spinning ball. The horizon is flat. 360 degrees across the view of sight. The horizon is always at eye level and it's flat, not curved. You can go 22, 24 miles up in space and the horizon is still flat. Even when you're at the top of the mountains and in an airplane, the horizon is always flat. And they say, this is evidence. Just use your eyes, common sense. Planes, planes travel flat and level. And if they were really on a flat earth, they would constantly be diving in order to change from the curvature of the earth so they don't just fly off into space. So they would constantly have to nose dive down in order not to fly off the, off the earth. And this is another reason why they say that we are not on a round earth. The entire airline community is in on this conspiracy. They all know that they are not flying around a globe. They are in fact flying around a flat earth. Nobody, they say, the flat earth says that there are no flights that travel across the South Pole. If they go, if they go from here to here, they go around the South Pole. They don't actually fly right over the top of it. This is evidence that the entire airline community around the entire globe is in on this conspiracy that we actually live on a flat earth. So these are a list of items that the flat earth community uses to demonstrate they believe conclusively that the world that we live on is flat. So let's analyze these and let's look at some questions that we have, some scientific evidence that we have to determine what's the truth. Do we really live on a spinning ball? Or do we live on a flat earth? What is the truth? Stay tuned and we'll find out. So if you like what we're doing so far, go ahead and don't forget to subscribe and like. <laughs> Funny to me.